And so just to kind of frame this work, uh, we have a, a background in telerehabilitation really uh, learned early on many years ago that uh, for the volume of treatments needed for most rehabilitation therapies, uh, so talking about repeated treatments for days spanning weeks or even months, um, and the large number of, of patient participants needed in, in pivotal clinical trials, that uh, everything we can provide in the home setting with, with re what we call remote supervision uh, is very helpful for, for getting the trials and the data to inform future clinical use. And so when we, uh, about nine years ago now, became interested in the use of non-invasive brain stimulation with transcranial direct current stimulation or TDCS. And so we incorporated that into our telerehabilitation protocols. And we developed over several years, uh, what we call remotely supervised or RSTDCS, which is a really rigorous uh, protocol, rigorous meaning that there's a lot of uh, standards and checks uh, with trained personnel, but, but the person, the patient participant completes the daily treatment sessions in their home with equipment that we send to them. Uh, everything's done through live video conferencing uh, for, for real-time monitoring. And in this way, we've begun to study TDCS and ran large randomized sham controlled trials uh, to, again, advance our understanding of how it can be used clinically for uh, all different types of, of rehabilitation and, and other symptomatic uh, There's a lot of interest in general in the use of TDCS. And um, so with this protocol, I, I'll pass it off to Dr. Peloni to tell you about the analyses that she completed, um, just demonstrating uh, the safety, tolerability, and, and feasibility of this approach. So as Dr. Chauvet mentioned, the first step for a future like large-scale clinical application of TDCS at home for us was like showing that it was safe tolerable and uh, feasible. For this reason, we decide to aggregate data of safety and tolerability uh, that are coming from more from six clinical trials that we performed here at NYU Langone. And we include in the analysis more than 300 patients, uh, and we deliver more than 6,700 uh, sessions. So our patient population um, uh, include um, people with uh, diverse, uh, diverse neurological disorders like uh, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, and uh, they had um, age range uh, very broad from 18 to up 78 years old. And uh, what we found was that uh, our intervention protocol is safe because we never had a serious adverse event and is also tolerable because so our participants mainly reported um, very mild skin sensation like tingling, itching, and uh, these sensations were always like um, um, limited to the stimulation duration. And then uh, as a second like uh, step was like showing that this uh, tele-intervention is feasible, uh, even if it's like uh, delivered not in clinic, but at home. And uh, we found that more than 90% of our participants were able to complete uh, more than two thirds of the, start of the target number of sessions like the, mm, uh, of, of our protocols. And uh, we also were able to enroll uh, in two big clinical trials, uh, 120 and 60, 60 participants uh, in a very short period of time, including uh, um, the research post that, um, that we faced during the COVID-19 lockdown. Non-invasive brain stimulation therapies in general, of which TDCS is one type, um, it's really a rapidly growing uh, therapeutic area. And so it, it needs a lot of study. So technology is rapidly advancing and there's a lot of interest because it's a non-drug treatment um, and it can be used for many different types of uh, symptom and condition management. So um, for instance, uh, we do a lot of 
speaking with Dr. Poloni with the, uh, Dr. Poloni's study of, called functional targeting, where you can stimulate targeted regions in the brain that are engaged in, in a rehabilitative activity to boost or harness and, and hopefully make more enduring the benefit that you get from the rehabilitation activity, whether it's motor or cognitive. Um, it also has a great deal of clinical efficacy demonstrated for use in symptom management like uh, or condition management like a major depression. So there's a lot of potential uses for it, but across studies, um, we know that you need many daily repeated sessions um, to really get the benefit. Um, we don't know how many um, and we need further study, but we know that it's a cumulative effect, just like as rehabilitation is a cumulative effect. And so that's really the key reason that we need to take this to, to people at home, because it's just not feasible for patients to come every day to clinic to receive a treatment, especially again, if it's daily for weeks or months. And so this really enables access and it also enables access to treatment for people who may be at higher ends of, uh, on the spectrum of disabilities that again, would face even greater barriers coming to clinic. So it, it reaches people that we believe should be included in the trials now that otherwise wouldn't be included, who may even get the most benefit from, um, all by going, uh, delivering treatment to, to people in their homes. And as Dr. Poloni demonstrated with the gate equipment and with the TDCS equipment, it may seem very complicated with all the, all the equipment that we're sending home, but we've really spent many years carefully designing our protocol and our equipment optimization so that, that almost anybody can access this treatment, uh, at home through telemedicine. For a um, right, correct use of TDCS at home, there is some like key component, both in the protocol and in the device that we use. So speaking of the protocol, uh, we um, want uh, like in order to have the same high standard of in clinic um, uh, application of TDCS, uh, we uh, work a lot in the um, supervision that is like uh, through all the session um, from the start to the from the start to the end, and then also like um, safety monitoring, but also uh, precise dosing. And for having precise dosing, we use a um, device that can be unlocked only with a single use code that is given each daily station uh, to the participant by uh, the study technician that is live. And then we also work a lot in the design of the headset that has to be easy to um, easy to position by the participant that can have like a different like level of maybe motor and dexterity like um, impairments and um, then also has to be has to guarantee that uh, the electrode placement is uh, reproducible across participant and uh, across sessions and then also the electro sponge that we use uh, to deliver TDCS, they are very like uh, easy to use because they are or they are ready to be used. They just have to be snapped in the headset. We see this as really a way to enable clinical research with TDCS. Uh, there's a lot of promising signals um, and, and promising trial results. And so uh, this is a way to do the pivotal clinical trials and, and to reach our patient participants uh, to really understand and optimize TDCS as a treatment option. Um, and as Dr. Poloni said, it's feasible for clinical trials. Uh, we had adequate blinding in our trials, so we really demonstrated that this protocol first replicates in on-site in lab standards um, because of its rigor and, and in real-time video conference monitoring. Um, so we're, we're very assured uh, of the, the rigor of, of the treatment that's delivered and that it was very feasible and that um, almost all participants were able to access the treatment from home and it was popular as well and that we enrolled quickly and, and the patients uh, completed um, in one trial up to 30 sessions of treatment, daily treatments uh, for the trial. So we're very excited uh, for this to, uh, again, inform the optimization and towards the clinical use of TDCS for our patients.